incurate are editing the etc hostname file or using the hostname ctl command are unsupported and you must use our documented procedure to alter your hostname. In this video, we will cover recommended practices when choosing a hostname, then demo how to change it. Be aware that event and flow services are stopped while you make network changes, so consider scheduling this change during a maintenance window. So what exactly is an FQDN, or fully qualified domain name? It consists of your hostname followed by your top-level domain. These two parts are separated by a period, and if there are any subsections in your domain, they are separated by periods as well. There are some considerations when picking your new hostname. Curator enforces the recommendations in the RFC 4343 and recommends all characters in a hostname and domain be lowercase because domain name systems are case insensitive. The maximum number of characters for an FQDN is 64 characters, so subtract the length of your domain plus one to determine the maximum length your hostname can be. Although Linux supports some special characters, we recommend using only hyphens and no other special characters. For example, you could use hyphens to separate words in your hostname instead of underscores. Avoid using dash primary or dash secondary in your hostname because if you enable high availability, those strings are appended to the base hostname during setup. If you have other hostnames using that naming convention, it can interfere with the HA system. Also keep in mind that if you plan to set up a high availability system, the maximum length of your hostname is reduced by 10 additional characters to save space for that dash secondary string. And don't forget that you need to use a valid top-level domain. See RFC 2606 for information on reserved and invalid TLDs. If you are changing the hostname of the Curator console in a multi-host setup, you must first remove all other managed hosts in the deployment before continuing. Pause this video and follow the provided documentation if you need to do that. If you're changing the hostname of a managed host connected to a console, you need to first remove it from the deployment before continuing. Follow the provided documentation if you need to do that. And finally, if you're changing the hostname of a system that is part of a high availability pair, you must first disable HA before continuing. Pause this video and follow that documentation if necessary. First confirm there are no undeployed changes by logging into the console as the administrator. Open the admin tab, then check the top of the page here for undeployed changes. If there are undeployed changes, you must deploy them before proceeding. You must also verify all external storage, which is not slash store slash Arial or slash store is not mounted. Now to change the hostname, log into the console as the root user. Attempting to complete this change through a remote session such as SSH or PuTTY is not supported because if your connection is interrupted during the process, it can disable your device. So you must either use IMM or have a local connection to the system. Once you are in, run the qchange underscore net setup command and read the disclaimers before continuing. If you are connecting over a serial console connection, such as for Juniper boxes, you must use the dash Y option. Be aware that while you edit the host's network settings, all event and flow services are stopped. Enter Y to continue. You have to wait a few minutes for the script to stop the necessary services before you can continue. After the services are stopped, the script brings you to the internet protocol setup interface. Here you can complete the wizard to edit your network settings. The fields are pre-filled with your system's current settings, so you only need to touch the settings you intend to change. For us, that's the host name. Use tab to select next at the bottom and click enter to continue. We won't touch the internet protocol setup or the manage interface setup, but on the network information setup page, we can enter our new host name. Although this field is called the host name, it is the fully qualified domain name. So you must ensure the value you enter includes your domain. While the field is highlighted, you can use the arrow keys to scroll through the name and edit it as you need. Once you have entered your new fully qualified domain name, tab down to finish and click enter. After that, your terminal displays messages related to it applying the change, and after a few minutes, your QRadar system automatically shuts down and restarts. To verify the change, SSH into the host and use the hostname command to print out your hostname. If you have a multi-host environment or high availability setup, don't forget to re-enable them. And if you need further assistance, see the video description for a list of resources. And remember, you can always contact us at QRadar Support.